this week's Sports Japan. We bring you a special edition on the martial art of Ju Kendo. We reveal its history and how it's closely intertwined with Japan's modernization. We also look closely at some of the lightning fast techniques. Hello everybody, I'm Oyako Kisa and you're watching Sports Japan. So as always, we've got some great stuff in store for you from the exciting world of Japanese sports and martial arts. And on today's show, we're going to look at Jukendo, which is a unique Japanese martial art of bayonet fighting. And to help us is martial arts researcher and practitioner, Baptiste Tavernier from France. Great to see you again. Um. Thank you for inviting me again. So you came to Japan in 2006 to That's study right. martial yes. arts, right? Yes, yes. And uh, I've been studying Naginata. Naginata. And several things I'm actually a fourth done in Naginata, in Jukendo, in Tankendo, which is oh, the wow. <laughs> short sword fighting, and then Nidan in Batodo, which is drawing sword techniques. Batodo. And also I do a little bit of classical Ooh. martial arts so too. You're, you're really involved in Japanese ah, yes. martial arts. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to, you're going to share your insights yep. into do kendo. So you've brought some stuff for us today. Yes, um, a shinai and a mokuju. And everybody knows the shinai is yeah. the bamboo sword used in kendo. Kendo, yes. We've covered kendo a couple times. Mm -hmm. And the mokuju, which is the mock rifle and bayonet used in jukendo. And uh, if you want to... It's my first time to see it. It's much longer than the shinai yes, in kendo. And it's, it's pretty heavy, isn't it? Yes, it's one meter and 66 centimeters. And above one kilo. Mm -hmm. And More it's very hard and stiff, I realize. Uh, yeah, it's made of pure oak. Mm. So yeah, it's really stiff, really hard. Much harder than a china. Right. So Japanese martial arts such as, you know, like kendo and judo are really well known around the world. My question is, how about jukendo? Well, not at all. Not at all? <laughs> no, no. no. Even in Japan, when you say you do jukendo, people think you do Judo and Kendo. Oh, combined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they, they have no idea what is Jukendo is. And in Japan, there are like 47, 48,000 people practicing That's it. Yeah, Jukendo. And overseas, including myself, there must be, I don't know, five or six. That's it. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> How did you get involved in Jukendo? Well, when I was in Japan, I was um, training in Naginata mainly. And one day at international Budo, martial arts seminar, uh -huh. uh, we had the opportunity to try many things and there was Jukendo and as I knew it was linked to French uh, history mm. somehow, I decided I would give it a try. Mm, there's no reason not to, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> Alright, so let's begin by taking a look at the history of Jukendo and how it became a martial art. <laughs> In Jukendo, the thrust is the only type of attack permitted. The movement is smooth and efficient and targets specific areas of the body. Jukendo is now established as a martial art, but its history is closely entwined with Japan's modernization. Japan's modern era began in the late 19th century. Having opened to the outside world, the nation began to modify its military traditions and adopt foreign equipment and techniques, including sword fighting methods from France. French sword fighting, however, was focused mainly on fencing styles. Kozo Kaku, a renowned historian and martial artist, says it wasn't suited to Japan. With fencing, the sword is held in one hand. In Japanese martial arts, though, weapons are usually held with both hands. That's a big difference. Physically, too, fencing was very different from Japanese sword techniques. Japanese swordsmen always wielded their sword with two hands on the hilt, aiming to down their opponents with a single blow. In contrast, fencing techniques use just one hand, 
awkward for Japanese swordsmen. The footwork also felt peculiar. Focus shifted to French bayonet techniques. They had similarities to Japanese spearmanship as they were based on thrusting, and there was always some distance between opponents. By combining the French bayonet and Japanese spear methods, an attempt was made to create a hybrid that the Japanese would find easy to use. The spear is a very simple weapon. You slay by thrusting. Spears have been used in Japan for centuries, since the end of the Kamakura period. Various innovative techniques were tried and tested in battle, and these evolved in the Edo period. They were later combined with French bayonet techniques to create Ju Kendo. Ju Kendo went on to play a key role on the battlefield, even as late as the Second World War. But the end of the war in 1945 brought everything to a halt, with the occupying U.S. forces banning all martial arts. In 1952, the occupation ended and martial arts gradually re-emerged. This time, however, there was an emphasis on personal development rather than military prowess. This shift was crucial in developing the spirit of modern Jukendo. If we consider why people still practice Jukendo, I think we can say it survived because it still has value. And that from an educational perspective, it still has a certain richness. Thrusting is a simple method, but it's hard to master. I think it's incredible that the Japanese have elevated it into a true martial art. Evolving over many generations, Jukendo has grown into a captivating martial art that continues to flourish today. So as you could see in the video, the French martial techniques didn't fit the Japanese at all. And this is because they were based on this peculiar footwork, which is called the lunge, the lunging footwork, mm -hmm. which also exists in fencing. Okay. And this footwork doesn't exist in uh, Japanese martial culture at all. I see. So it was difficult for them to mm. learn these kind of techniques. Right. Uh, I can show you, actually. Okay, so let's welcome another expert in Jukendo, Mr. Ogawa. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Ogawa. Thank you. So, okay. uh, we're going to demonstrate first the, the old French techniques. Oh, please. The sliding first, we call that. And so, I take a little bit of space because it's quite big. So, Oh, yeah. So, as you can see, you have this lunging footwork. Like that. Right, you're really stretched out, yes. I can see. And that doesn't exist in Japanese culture mm. at all. That's okay. why they, so they had to combine uh, the bayonet techniques mm -hmm. with sojutsu or spear techniques, Japanese spear techniques. Okay. And by doing that, they arrived to this kind of techniques, which is. Okay, so it's like a step. Yes, it's you leap forward with the to fit, mm. so it's better fitting to the right. Japanese. Yeah, so I did see a big difference there. Yes. So now let's take a look at the differences between Kendo and Jukendo. So let's welcome a Kendo practitioner, please. Ah, uh, we okay. need a Shinai. Okay, so let's change it to a Shinai. Oh, thank you. So, well, basically, uh, okay. Jukendo, like in Kendo, um, they're based on the same principle. You have the Zanshin, for example, which, you know, the, the vigilance, the alternateness after the strike. Right. It's the same in Jukendo. But as for the striking areas, uh, well, I'm wearing the Jukendo armor, so it's really hard to do Kendo movement with it, but I'm, I'll try. Okay. So, you, the first strike will be the man. Okay, which is the mask. Man. And the second, to the wrist, the kote. Okay. Which is the gauntlet. Okay. 
And then you have the torso. Okay, which is the dough, torso. Both sides, Both sides. you can do. And finally, the thrust to the front, the tsuki. Okay. Yeah. Swish. Okay. I got the master. Okay. So as you could see, they are striking mm -hmm. and thrusting. But in Jukendo, actually there's only one technique. One? Yeah, that's it. Okay. It's so simple. Okay. <laughs> At least it looks simple. Oh. So, um, the first, there are several targets actually in Jukendo. And the main one being the heart, heart area. Okay. And it's dividing it to two, the uado. Uado, <laughs> upper area of the heart. Yes. So from here, you see. Okay. So I just go, my, it's really simple. My right hand from here goes directly to the chest. Okay. It's really simple movement. Simple movement. And you have the shtado, which is basically the same, but you go under the arm of your opponent, the shtado. Okay. So it's the lower okay. area of the heart. So, yes. Really simple. Okay. And okay. no. Another target, another target will be the nodo. The throat. Yes. Next is the throat. That's another simple. Yeah, it looks, it's the same as in Kendo actually. Yeah. Okay. So that's the main three. Main uh, three. Points you can get in Ju Kendo. All right. And on top of that, there's the Kote. Which, which is, is the left gauntlet. Yes, and when your opponent is masking his heart with his kote, only then you can strike. Kote, mm. we do it again. Kote, onegashimasu. Sha! Okay. And two extra targets are when your opponent is losing his balance. You have first the kata, or the shoulder. Shoulder. So the lost, lost, lost his balance, balance and blah! Okay. To the shoulders. And the second one will be the dough. Okay, the torso. Yes, Ogawa sensei lost his balance and yeah. And, ooh, you go for the torso. Yes. I got the So you can do you go for the heart. Yeah, right? that's the main the main target is the heart. Mm, right. Really. All right. So now I want to compare the protective wear. Yes. Use ten kendo and jukendo. It looks pretty similar, doesn't it? Well, it looks similar, but actually it's not. Okay, maybe you can tell us. About <laughs> well, of course, it. as everybody can see, the most obvious difference will be the the kata, kata. which doesn't exist in kendo. So it's really thick, protective, uh, like it's leather and buffalo hide. Mm. It's really thick. And then the second will be the ago or the throat protector, which is wider and sturdier than in kendo, as you can see. Mm. And the last one will be the kote. As you see, there is uh, only a glove here, protective glove, no gauntlet. Right. And on the other hand, you have the gauntlet like in kendo, but there is a difference here. This small bump is really important because it protects your wrist bone. You have it, you need to have it. Why? Otherwise, because when you thrust, this, uh, it, the bayonet always crash on this bone and mm. you will break the bone. Okay, so it is different in a way. Okay, now let's see how powerful Jukendo thrusts are and how fast an expert can attack. Attacks in Jukendo consist of a repeated series of thrusts. They are made with incredible speed and can be strong enough to knock the opponent flying. The speed of the footwork is also incredibly quick, much faster compared to other martial arts. It's all about the thrust. When you compare the force of the blows, there's no other martial art that beats Jukendo. A single attack can decide the fight. There is no other martial art that has such a simple yet powerful way of moving forward to strike and seal the win. The speed in Jukendo is mind-boggling, with an average attack taking just 0.3 seconds. 
Highly skilled practitioners can land their attacks in as little as 0.19 seconds. Kendo also includes thrusts, but they take an average of 0.6 seconds. Even the faster attacks take 0.32 seconds. It's the unique sideways stance of Ju Kendo that's the secret behind the speed. But it's not just about quickness. Accuracy is also essential for scoring a hit. A hit only counts, however, when the blow is struck with sufficient vitality, followed by a sharp withdrawal from the point of contact. I love Jukendo because the attacks are quick and you can never let your guard down. I'm not that big or strong, but I enjoy Jukendo since you can win with speed and cunning. Winning with a simple thrust in Jukendo is not as easy as it sounds. There's a hidden depth and complexity to this fascinating martial art. The thrusts look really look difficult to land accurately. Yes, indeed. Uh, there's only one technique, so it sounds really easy, but mm. it's not. It's not, huh? And um, so there's like several principles, like in Kendo, I would like to discuss. So okay. let's call Ogawa Sensei, maybe. Okay, please, please show us. Onegashimasu. Hey! As in Kendo, if you want to have a valid point, you need to reach the right target, of course. But that's not only that. You also need a sharp withdrawal of the bayonet. Okay. And after that, you need a zanshin, like in Kendo, which is like the relaxed alternance or vigilance mm -hmm. after the strike. Because you never know, maybe Ogawa Sensei can still attack. So you have oh, to I be see. ready to fight again. So that's the zanshin. Okay. And now we're going to demonstrate um, the um, three main targets Three and the three main, not targets, but to say the three main points okay. in Jukendo. Uh, so the basics, right? The basics. The first one is the Chokutotsu. Okay, Chokutotsu. So, which is the direct thrust. So, from here. I will show it again. Okay. So, you see, from here. Direct first. Okay. You cannot make it simpler than right. that. Right. It mm. looks pretty simple. Yes, and okay. Ogawa Sense is going to demonstrate. Tske! Tske! What does it feel like when you're being like attacked? Almost nothing. Nothing, okay. Yeah, it's really light. Okay. Mm. The next one will be the datotsu. Datotsu. The datotsu, which you can translate as evading first. Evading. Because Ogawa Sensei is going to push me because he wants to control my weapon. And while he's pushing me, I'm going to evade. Oh, so ah! Let's show it again. Oh, so, ah! so uh, of course, if you try to do this technique on your own, because if Ogawa Sensei doesn't push, this yeah. is what would happen. I lost. You lose. <laughs> That's a big difference. Yes. So it's only when he pushes when I can go. Go to yeah. the side and you can go. Okay. So uh, Ogawa Sensei is going to demonstrate it. Hasetsuke! Go! Hasetsuke! Go! And the third one, third most one? basic technique. Uh, is the katotsu, which is the lower tsuki. Okay. It's basically the same as the datotsu, but instead of pushing to the side, Ogawa Sensei is going to push upward, oh. and I'm going to escape downward and do a shitado, mm, a lower. I see. Mm. One more. Ah! Okay. Okay. Oh, under, lower. Yes. Okay. So let's do it again. Shitaotsuke! Oh! Sasuke! 
Okay, right. So that's basic technique. So now let's show more advanced technique. Ooh, like please, please. Araizuki, which is knocking your opponent weapon. So. Uh, so. Yeah. Oh, that was more so, fast. So, 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 so. Yeah. But if I miss it, this is what would happen. So. So. Okay, then you lose. Boom. And the bakiyotoshi. So. 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 What is that? Bakiyotoshi. Bakiyotoshi. It's Makiyotoshi. really powerful. Powerful. And you're just like pushing down your opponent's weapon once more. Makiyotoshi. So. so. Oh. Hey. Oh. Mm. No. Thank you. All right. So that looks strong and beautiful. Mm. I really enjoyed it. Okay. So now let's take a look at how some top practitioners use their well polished techniques in actual competition. The All Japan Jukendo Tournament determines the country's top team. A range of dynamic thrusting techniques are always on display. Attack is seen as the best form of defense, and competitors must stay sharp to outwit their opponent. The fierce cut and thrust never fails to thrill the crowd. Sometimes competitors look to block their opponent's thrust and launch a counterattack. Numerous strategies are applied in the rapid exchanges. Many of the participants at the All Japan Tournament are members of the country's self-defense force. But there is also a hard-fought competition for civilian teams. This year, the team from Kokushikan University won for the first time in 14 years. We haven't been able to win for a very long time. I'm delighted. Kokushikan's Jukendo team consists of 10 members. Over the past few years, they've practiced almost every day with an intensity designed to mimic real bouts. Their leading members are Shunsuke Noda and Hirotoshi Aita. If you don't train properly, it can really affect your tournament matches. However tired you feel, you have to put everything into each thrust. Aita specializes in rapid attacks, while Noda likes to use his long reach to block and counterattack. With the pair always fighting so fiercely in practice, their teammates are constantly inspired to up their game. Coach Shunsuke Tomizu says the team's attitude has been transformed. We've been doing morning practice for two years. In riding, it's how many times you're in the saddle. In martial arts, it's how much you practice. I'm pleased that their determination has started to produce results. Coach Tomizu places great importance on the stance taken before a strike. The most important thing is posture. If someone is leaning too far forward, or if their hands are too low, I always tell them. Coach Tomizu says poor posture leads to inefficient movements when stepping into attack and slows the speed of the thrust. With the All Japan Tournament firmly in their sights, the Kokushikan University team resolutely honed and fine-tuned their Jukendo. I imagine thrusting straight towards my target. I picture the most direct attack. I concentrate to ensure that my footwork, breathing, and body movements are all in proper harmony. 
The first member from Kokushikan to fight in the All Japan final was Aita, who favors rapid attacks. <laughs> Given the slightest opening, he takes direct advantage. Aita wins the opening bout, getting Kokushikan off to a great start. The final is fought in a best of three format, so Kokushikan can win the title with the next bout. Next up is Noda, the counter attack specialist. Although Noda loses the first point, he soon strikes back. And he doesn't stop there. True to form, he hits with a counterattack to give Kokushikan victory. Kokushikan University's hard work finally paid off with their first triumph in 14 years. We definitely couldn't have done it without each other's support. I'd like to thank everyone who's encouraged and stood by us. Ju Kendo for these young men is a passion. It won't be long before they're back improving their skills even further. Yeah, it's great to see competitors from the universities and also community clubs. And what we didn't see in those videos is actually there's a lot of women doing women? Jukendo in Japan. Oh, really? Yes. So that'll probably help Jukendo's popularity expand, don't you indeed, think? Indeed, indeed. And we need from now on to expand overseas. So yeah, that's the next um, plan of the All Japan Jukendo Federation, starting an international federation. Right. So tell me, what's so special about Jukendo? I mean, you know all the other martial arts well, as well. Well, I think the most interesting thing is the paradox between simplicity and complexity. It looks so simple, but, but in, in fact, it's really complex, way mm. complex than many of the martial arts. Right. And it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it I looks really, beautiful, yeah. and strong. I really like it. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for inviting Please me. Please come back again. Uh, I will, for sure. Okay, so thank you everybody for watching Sports Japan and we'll see you next week.